Hello, I'm Tim Harris. This is Julie Harris, and this is Real Estate Coaching Radio. That's right. So make sure that you hit the subscribe button so you won't miss any future episodes. Thanks again for popping by. Hit that like button, and don't forget to leave your comments and questions so we can get right back with you. We will. Thank you for continuing to make our podcast, Real Estate Coaching Radio, the number one listened to podcast for real estate professionals in at least the United States. And let us know what you think about this video. Leave your comments below. Thank you. We are back and this podcast is going to be a test. That's right, a test, but I promise all of you will actually have fun taking it and love the results. And this is going to be a 25-question self-administered test that we're going to give to all of you. And uh, yeah, I think it's going to open your eyes as to a lot of the things you're doing right and maybe some of the things you can improve upon in your real estate business. But before we do, Julie Harris has an email that she'd like to read to all of you. Yes, actually, uh, this was an email to myself reminding me about a post that coaching client, uh, one of our premier coaching clients, Ryan Montoya, put on the private members only Facebook page. That's also where some of the coaching sessions happen. Here's what Ryan posted just a couple days ago. Ryan says, feedback on the open house binder of listings within a one mile radius of my listing. That's something he learned in Premier Coaching. He said, I had a great open house today. I had 12 people. Now, some of you will say, only 12 people will get this. Of those 12 people, three were solid buyer leads, two were seller leads that both got a pre-listing package. Also something he uh, got from Premier Coaching. Now, one of the sellers has two homes to sell. Everyone loved the listing binder. So how did he get these results? He posted that, 15 directional signs. He did Google ads for more exposure. He did 100 open house invitations in the neighborhood the day before. He email blasted all agents in town to bring their buyers, so that must have been on his listing he was holding open. Set a canopy outside with a table and music. Now I'm going to be sending everyone a thank you card for coming into our open house. So I would say that's a pretty rock star conversion rate, 12 people and three buyer leads, two seller leads, one of which has two houses, so that's a total of six potential transactions at least. Now the interesting thing about uh, what happened the next day, I think he posted this maybe on Wednesday. I saw another post, Ryan uh, typically goes to all the um, coaching sessions, you know, the semi-private uh, coaching sessions. So, you know, he's a frequent flyer, of course. And he posted, sorry, I won't be able to attend this one today because I was door knocking expireds and I'll be on a listing appointment. Well, the best part of all <laughs> that is, A, he's doing the real work of real estate. Yes. B, he's op obviously putting himself in the position to help people make money. But, you know, I'm loving the fact that he's getting these ref these uh, leads and he's not paying anything for them. Not one red cent. Not a referral fee, nothing. Mm -hmm. And in, in a world where paying for your leads constantly, it seems to be on the, you know, that seems to be the omnipresent topic. Like, where can I buy leads? Well, how about this? You buy leads with going out and getting your own leads and then you make a hell of a lot more money. And the, other, the underlying um, benefit uh, beyond all the things I just mentioned mm -hmm. is his confidence. Yes, that's right. And I also liked, one of the reasons I pulled that out to share with all of our listeners was his combination of things that he's doing and his very low ratios. He's not talking about, you know, I got uh, six leads out of my drip campaign going to a thousand people a thousand times a year or anything like that. No, he's using a pre-listing package. He's doing the open house system. He did the binder that Coach Rochelle taught a couple of days ago. As in part of you know, Premier Coaching. In Premier Coaching, he's been very coachable. He doesn't just go to the sessions, he's implementing. And then on top of that, he's not just lead generating in one source. You know, he started out talking about open houses. Then he was talking about doing his expired door knocking. So you can see how Ryan is having success on a high level by combining several skills at the same time and implementing at a high level. Absolutely. It's fantastic. So congratulations, Ryan. And literally the thousands of you are also taking the same level of action in a market where yeah. uh, everyone else is buying their leads and putting people in drip campaigns. The guess what? Direct face to face human contact really is working wonders. So definitely yeah. get off your butts, get away from your keyboards and go out there and help people and make yourself a lot of money. All right, Julie. Yes. So let's roll right in with the test agents. Uh, do you know? Actually, you okay. wrote it, so you That's can read okay. it. That's <laughs> okay. So this topic uh, today is the result of a premier coaching session that one of our coaches did this week. Coach Rochelle rolled this out. The coaching members liked it so much that we decided to make it into today's podcast. Coaching clients reported that they felt like they had so much more specific direction on what specifically to work on after that session. Now, we can't do the full drill down on this podcast like we do in coaching, but we'll at least give you the questions that were used 
There were 25 questions, so we'll go through them relatively quickly, and you can scan down and get those questions. That's what I was about to say, Jules. Thanks. So yes, the notes for today's podcast, and this would be a great test for you to use uh, for your teams or your brokerages or what mm -hmm. have you. And uh, yeah, so the notes are in today's uh, show description. So if you're on iTunes, Spotify, wherever you are, just scroll down. It's all there. We are doing a better job of making sure all of our notes fit because sometimes we get edited by you, uh, iTunes, for example, but they're all there. And when you're there, hey, this is a perfect time for you to join Premier Coaching. So just click the link that's below and you'll again find the link for the offer for the uh, your new your free access to Premier Coaching, the show notes below. So just click the link. It takes like 17 seconds to join Premier Coaching. And yes, that will entitle you to a free daily semi-private coaching call for the next 30 days uh, daily during you know work days. So please go ahead and join Premier Coaching. All right, Julie, let's go ahead and jump in and let's get these guys right. these questions. That's right. Now, these are not multiple choice questions. These are not writing an essay type of answers. You have only two choices. The answer is either yes or no. But there's a way of, there, so are we going to do the scoring like before or after? Uh, they, they can do their own. What we're, what we're looking at is how many yeses versus how many noes. Okay, that's it. So we're going to, at the end of this, there, we're going to be counting up how many yeses that you, uh, you know, had versus how many no's that you had. And based on that information, then you're going to have a plan of action that's going to evolve. That's right. And in Premier Coaching, there were more questions than this. I just pulled out the top 25. So if you answer no more than yes, then you need to get to work upgrading your skills, your habits, your discipline, your schedule. The test will reveal exactly what you need to work on, and you'll have the direction you're looking for. For your yes answers, make sure you keep doing what you're already doing good or great at and strive to do it at an even higher level. For your no answers, at the end of the test, circle at least the top three to conquer this quarter, this month, and this week. Now, note to self, if your answer to any of these questions is not always or only sometimes, that counts as a no. So we're going with either no or yes. Let's get started. So yes or no real estate skills test. Number one. And we, we can comment if you'd like in between these because we'll go fairly I read the, quickly. I scanned these beforehand. These are all, you know, real work of real estate stuff. So it's good drill down information. Yes, it's pretty direct. So number yep. one, are at least 50% of your past 10 transactions listings? Now, obviously, if you just got licensed yesterday, you won't have that stat. But for those of you who are in the business a little bit further on, at least 50% of your past transactions, are they listings, yes or no? And that's yes or no. And that's and we should have, though we won't, you could have even added the caveat to there. Were you paying referral fees for those? Were you buying those sure. leads? But just for the sake of this test and for the sake of today's podcast, were 50% of your past 10 transactions you know, five, 20, adjust accordingly, mm -hmm. but are 50% of all of your deals from listings? Point or question number two. Question number two, do you know what your magic number is? And if you don't know what that question uh, means, then the answer is no. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> right. And you know, we might have some brand new listeners and maybe they're exempt, but they can dig into virtually every podcast we've done referring to that. The Harris Rules book, Premier Coaching, all uh, the real estate treasure map, all of that mentions the magic number. Well, so assuming you didn't know what it meant, the magic number formula is what you discover when you're completing the real estate treasure map. I know we have all these funny sort of Harry Potter terms, but mm -hmm. um, it, you get the treasure map for free. It's your fill in the blank business and life plan. You get that for free in the first level of Premier Coaching. And the output of that, what you're then going to know is what your magic number formula is. Really important that you get this done. It's waiting there for you in Premier Coaching. It is free for you to join Premier Coaching. Scroll down, as I said, and just click the link. Or, of course, you can just text the word Premier to 47372. You can text the word Premier to 47372. But remember, when texting, message and data rates may apply. Okay, question number three. Do you have and most importantly, actually use a pre-listing package. If you don't know what a pre-listing package is, the answer is no. Right. That's right. <laughs> Number four, do you have and use an organized database, otherwise known as a CRM, with, with updated contact information for all of your past clients and centers of influence? So for some of you, you would answer, yes, I have a database, but we made the question harder because it actually has to have updated contact information uh, that's accurate for your past clients and sphere of influence. It has to actually have good stuff in there. Okay, point number, or question number five, do you speak with at least three people from your database every workday about real estate? And I made it only three so that many people will be able to say yes, but some of you will say no. And but notice the word was speak with. Yes. Not message. Not drip, message, text, yes. or otherwise send smoke signals. Speak with, for uh, the younger folks, that means your voice. 
That's right. <laughs> okay, number six, do you dedicate at least 80% of each workday to proactive lead generation? Question number seven. Do oh, you, you know, that would have been a good thing too. We could ramble on that forever, I, right? Well, we but, have on other podcasts. Right. Proactive lead generation versus passive lead generation. Proactive lead generation is you making direct contact with a, you know, human, an adult human about buying or selling real estate yeah. versus passive is, for example, you doing anything, hoping and praying that someone then will respond to your, let's say, ad or branding activity. Yes. Face to face or voice to voice is right. what we mean. Okay. That's what proactive is. Yes. Number seven, do you have an open house system? that creates at least two closable leads every time you hold a home open. Think about what we shared with you from Ryan, right? So he clearly does have a system. He and he gave you the bullet points and he got well more than at least two. But do you so there's two things here. Do you have an open house system? You might have one, but is the system working for you? It has to at least create two closable leads every time you use it. And we've done podcasts about open houses as well. Point number eight, question number eight, do you close at least six transactions yearly as a result of your open house system? That's just testing your answer to number seven. Question number nine, are you confident that you accurately price your listings? Well, how do you know? Do they sell within, I would say, no more than 60 days? You're probably a pretty good pricer. Are you struggling with price reductions? Do you have stuff that's sitting on the market or maybe you're getting feedback all the time, great house, but it's too much? Or maybe you're hesitant to take listings because of the fact that you don't know how to accurately price your listings. That's the reason people join Premier Coaching. It's a very critically important skill. If for no other reason, then when working with buyers, they're going to know whether a listing is priced accurately. But oddly enough, buyers, generally speaking, will know whether or not something's priced accurately from having seen the competition. That's true. But what they won't have access to, which the appraisers will, which you will, you know, find is going to work against you when it comes to getting that mortgage approval, is you're going to have to know the comps, the comparable properties, and it all goes back to knowing how to confidently and accurately price listings. Question 10. Question 10. Do you have professional profiles on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram? Professional meaning that it looks like you, it's filled out, your picture is right, your contact information is right, all three of those assets actually match, and it looks like you are in business. Or does it look like you set it up three years ago and haven't done anything with it? And by the way, it is okay to mix personal and professional um, in some cases, I think that people will kind of expect it. They are not wanting just to go and read your real estate propaganda on your Instagram page. They're going to want to go there to learn more about you. And then you sprinkle in your propaganda, your, you know, your offers for CMAs and whatnot. So it's okay to mix. And if you want to see our Instagram page, it's, um, you know, Instagram, then it's at Tim and Julie Harris, and you guys can check it out. Uh, question 11, Julie Harris. Do you ask, who do you know who could use my help buying or selling real estate at least twice daily? Who do you know, like, uh, hey, Julie, uh, you know, after you've had a normal natural conversation with Julie at Starbucks or in the line at the grocery store or wherever and said, hey, Julie, by the way, who are the two or three people that you can think of right now who are thinking about buying or selling real estate that I should be helping in this market? You guys can iterate on that question, but the essence of it is, is you're giving them a number to think of, a, a number of people, and then you're asking a question and you're including the word helping. Who are the people you know that I should be helping buy or sell real estate in this market? Mm -hmm. And you will be surprised, you will absolutely be shocked in some cases how frequently you actually get a referral that way. That's true. And remember, it's not do you know anybody because people don't spend much thought on right. that answer. It's who do you know or, who, or you know, two or three people you know. Don't ask questions that can result in a yes or a no because the human brain's always going to shut it down. Who are the two or three people? Who are the one or two people? Or, hey, Julie, who's the number one person right now that you can think of that is thinking about buying or selling real estate that I should be helping. Those types of questions are going to generate leads. Even if you don't get one right away, that person's going to remember that you asked and they're going to, if they stumble across somebody, send that person to you. That's right. Question number 12. Do you have goals in five areas of life and are they posted where you see them daily? Again, that comes from the real estate treasure map. Do you actually have Goals in five areas of life, and are they posted? And the goals in the five areas, Julie Harris, are? Oh, putting me on the spot, are you? I am. Uh, family, financial, <laughs> physical, mental or emotional, and education. That's right. There you go. Okay, point number, or question number 13. Do you use whiteboards to visually track your business? You should be tracking your listing leads, your buyer leads. So you have a leads board. You have an active listing leads. Those are the ones you have kind, you know, actively on the market. Uh, your pendings and your closings. You should be tracking all of those. We teach you that very, very specifically in Premier Coaching. And all of my elite coaching members have to send me 
a picture of their whiteboards. I think you have you do that as well. I do, yeah. Uh, prior to every coaching call, and it really does keep you on track. So. Well, it's so yeah, KPIs and cool dashboards that show up on your you know your mobile phone and whatnot are fantastic. Really neat. Love the technology. But nothing will ever be as powerful as walking into your workspace and having a big dry erase board that was pre that you uh, numbered in permanent mm -hmm. um, ink one through a hundred for the number of closings you're going to do this month, and you're looking at it and realizing you've only done thirty, right? In other words, you're going to see all the blank spots on the one through a hundred that should be representing closed transactions. That is a really wonderful, overt, psychological reinforcement of the direction you should be going. The problems with the dashboards inside your phone and your computer is you can hide from it. A dry erase board, especially a big one that dominates your workspace, no hiding from that. No, that's right. It's called visual accountability. Yes, number 14, you might guess that this would have been in there. Are you involved in coaching? It's a yes or no, guys. You can fix that right away, by the way. All right, 15, uh, do you have and use an actual buyer presentation? A lot of you do have listing presentations, but maybe there's a reason why most agents complain about buyers not being loyal, buyers not knowing what to do next, buyers working with two agents at once, buyers buying a for sale by owner, walking into an open house and, list and working with that agent or going to new construction. Well, your buyer presentation, of course, cures that. Do you have one? The answer is yes or no. The output of the buyer presentation is the buyer signs the buyer agency, um, you know, your agency agreement that your state uh, requires. And they're also signing an exclusive buyer agency contract with you. And they're also signing a sample buyer net sheet. That's really the output. Just like if you were to go on a listing presentation and you were to, you know, you, you don't have the listing until the seller signs the paperwork. That's what your mindset should be about working with buyers. A lot of you have taken this sort of laissez-faire, lazy approach to working with buyers and you treat it like a big social experiment. You wonder why some of these buyers flake out on you. It's because they don't have any sense of loyalty to you because you've not approached them in the first place as a professional. Okay, number 16. Do you answer your phone 80% of the time when it rings? This is a huge one. I've had so many coaching clients tell me this, this comes out of our coaching section about uh, furiously fast lead follow-up. You don't have to worry about your follow-up so much when you actually answer the phone when it rings. Now, you guys will complain, well, there's so many spam calls and robo-dialers and, you know, scam likely. You can answer, I just recently discovered this. Probably our listeners already know this, but um, you can answer. And if it is one of those calls, an undesirable call where you're on some list and you don't want to be there anymore, of course, you're going to tell them, please take me off your list. You're going to hang up. And then you go to your recent calls. You can click on that and say, block that number. So, Julie, that technology has been out since like I know. Night. Yeah. But, <laughs> but see, I'm removing their excuse, too. I don't answer anything. I send everybody to voicemail because I hate robocalls. Well, so the other alternative to that uh, same you know, goal is basically 800, 1-800-HOME-HOTLINE.COM. You guys should check out that as well, 1-800-HOME-HOTLINE.COM. Direct your buyer leads to call a 1-800-HOME-HOTLINE, your own exclusive phone number, and then they can uh, press zero while on the call and connect directly to you. But no matter what, you can call them back right away. The point is, is po uh, question number 17, which pay attention to this one. This one question, if you do this, actually do it at the highest level, you will find that your entire world will start to sh start to shift on the, its axis. Which is uh, number 17, do you follow furiously fast lead follow-up? Yes or no? Well, let's define that so they can answer that properly. Furiously fast lead follow-up, and Rochelle covered this on her uh, premier coaching session, is calling somebody back within one minute or less unless you are in front of a client right now at a listing presentation or showing a property. One minute or less. Again, if you answered your phone in the first place from our previous point, you probably don't have much of this problem. Now, if you are in a situation, and I'm not giving you a shortcut, I'm just telling you, if you're in a situation where you can't call them back right away and you do get a call, then you can actually, you know, go and text them back. You can have a bunch of auto replies set up and have the text back be a question. I'm in a meeting right now. Can I call you back the next 10 minutes? Just do it like that. There you go. But at least respond. At least respond. That's the thing. The furiously fast lead follow-up. And to this day, I can remember all of Julie and I's largest transactions where he got paid the most money were always from the fact that when that you know prospect was reaching out to us initially, they didn't go to a phone tree. They didn't go to an mm -hmm. assistant. They didn't go to you know somebody in the Philippines that was going to run them through a CRM, run them through a funnel. They went directly to, frankly, 1-800-HOME-HOTLINE.COM, and I called them back immediately. And, and when Julie and I sold real estate, 
all the most expensive uh, listings that we had. One of the caveats with the reason the sellers chose to list it with us is because we agreed that we would personally do all the lead follow up, even though at the time we did have a team. And that was, again, one of the USPs we presented to sellers. But, the you know, yes, that was an advantage to the seller because we knew the house better. But here's the real reason I wanted to do it, because of the fact that the buyers that were calling off that 800homehotline.com sign for that particular, say, million or $2 million or $3 million house, they probably were going to be willing to buy it directly from the listing agent, Julie and I, and they most likely, most certainly had another property to sell. So those are the best leads ever. So what do you say to a lead when you call them back? You use the buyer pre-qualification script. The more expensive the buyer lead, like the more expensive the listing that they're calling on, you've got to assume and act as if they are actually are listings, they're sellers as well. So get ready to pivot and get ready to discover that your buyer leads are actually mostly, and in some markets it's 80%, people that have homes to sell. Question well, 18. Yes. And you've got to be there when they want their questions answered. That is the biggest thing, you know, and you're right. Thinking back to all those transactions, it was because we were Johnny on the spot. You, since you brought that up, Julie, yeah. when you are looking for, let's say you're uh, selling in a really expensive market or a marginally expensive market, your customers are going to be used to a level of service that you frankly might not have been exposed to. And let me give you an example. When you are shopping for something expensive, and I mean something that's really, like say you're working with someone that's going to be, you know, a one-tenth of a one percenter in that price range, those people do not go ever have to deal with a big phone tree or a big, no. you know, sales funnel. They're going directly to the head of whatever, like if you're buying, and I know these are extreme examples, but if you're buying an, an amazed purse, you're dealing directly with the person. You're not having to go through a big rat maze in order to get help. If you're buying a very high-end car, a Rolls Royce or a Ferrari or something like this, you're not going through a rat maze to get the product. You are going to have an experience that is similar to going to a really nice hotel where you're dealing directly with the concierge, where they've remembered what you had last time you were there, or maybe you filled out a survey prior to getting there. They know you like this newspaper. They know you like your coffee in the morning this way, those types of experiences. So when they do business with agents, and they're used to that level of experience and they do business with agents who are not used to that level of experience, don't know that level of, of you know, service exists, then that seller is or that client is going to see a mismatch. Okay, Bob has his house listed for $3 million, but clearly Bob does not know how to deal with people in the $3 million price range. You guys get the point? So you're going to have to learn as you progress in your price points, you're going to have to learn how to make sure you're a match or even exceeding the expectations mm -hmm. of folks that are already in that price point. Well, treat everyone as if they are in that price point and you're going to win every time. Well, that is the shortcut, right? I mean, honestly, what Julie just said is the home run idea right there. Don't have different ways of treating different people. Just treat everyone yes. as if they're walking into a Ferrari store. That's a system, isn't it? That's <laughs> yeah. a filter. Didn't you have a coaching client that had, I don't know if it was his listing or if it was uh, an ad that he was part of. Didn't Bono from U2 call directly oh, on, Alex. on, on uh, it was like a $5 million or something or other, All the, and he was surprised that he was talking directly with him. All the elite coaching clients that I've ever coached that work in that those sort of circles, and we've had a lot in New York and yep. LA mostly, mm -hmm. they always are dealing directly with the um, the actual you know superstar. The only time you ever have um, like new money celebrity types, mm -hmm. those would be sometimes athletes, but a lot of times uh, performers. They go through business managers, right? But yeah, even Bono, then, that's still direct, right? Bono calls, right? But it's not the same. Bono yeah. would call direct. You know, Sly Stallone. I have clients that have worked like three different agents that have worked mm -hmm. with Sly Stallone. He's not loyal to agents. All these different folks, and again, it just. I mean, we're gonna we can we should do a podcast on working with the ultra upper end. Mm -hmm. We really should because there is an art and a science to it, but. The real blessing of working in that price point is, yes, the commissions are higher, uh, but they're frankly a lot easier to work with. A lot of times people working in the, or buying or selling in that price point, they've done it so many times, um, they're not going to be overly demanding because they know what to expect. And as long as you meet or exceed those expectations, mm -hmm. they're going to keep doing business with you. That's Next right. question. Okay. Next question, number 18. Do you send five thank you cards or congratulation cards every day? That's an easy one. If you said no to it, you can start saying yes starting today. Question number 19, do you have and use a listing presentation? I might add a secondary question, is it working for you? But do you have and use a listing presentation? 
Number 20, do you listen to this podcast daily? Well, if you just discovered us, you can start listening today and say yes to that. And a lot of people listen to the podcast daily, not necessarily uh, for the content. And we realize that you guys are listening to the podcast daily because you want to stay attached to folks like Julie and I and all the people in our coaching uh, you know, business and all the folks that work with us around the world. You want to stay attached to people that are uh, transcending the current market and moving on, you know, climbing up the mountain, basically. You're looking for like-minded folks that are not essentially hiding out in the cave waiting for the clouds to clear. You're looking for folks that are motivated, excited to be of service to other people. And it is a, a community, a movement, if you will. Mm-hmm. So that's the reason a lot of you guys listen to us every day. And we certainly appreciate that. And uh, it keeps us motivated to keep doing the podcast because this podcast yes. takes a long time every single week. Indeed, it does take some work. Yep. Question number 21, are you self-generating more leads than you're paying for? That's a simple yes or no. Now, we want to also, uh, our agent-to-agent referral, those are always great. Those aren't the types of leads yeah, that that's Julie... that's different. That's different. But when your your whole business is predicated on where can I buy a lead, that's when you've got a problem. You basically are beholden to whoever it is that's selling the leads and you're never going to have any independence, let alone very little net profit in your business. It is a fixable problem as long as you decide to be a proactive lead generator. Question 22. Do you have a predictable, duplicatable business, or are you dependent mainly on the luck of repeat and referral business? Luck and hopium is not a plan. And NAR is, uh, I know a lot of you guys are addicted to and it's, I totally understand why. You're thinking that your centers of influence and past clients-based businesses are going to create consistent uh, lead uh, sources for you. But it doesn't work that way. Be, unless you're actually, even if you're calling them, your centers of influence and past clients are the first folks that you need to uh, have your first spoke on your lead generation wheel. But they cannot be your only spoke. Why? Because if you have 100 people, yes, statistically, a certain percent will be doing a real estate transaction. But that's kind of where the logic starts to fall on its face. Because what makes you think those 100 people aren't in 100 other agents, centers of influence, and past clients lists, Mm -hmm. and those agents aren't also dropping off pumpkin pies in November or whatever? You guys get the point? So the only way to really make, or the best way to really make your center of influence and past client list truly work for you is to pick up the phone and call them or having direct face-to-face meetings with them. And then after that, if you want to do, uh, you know, expireds as we teach you to do in the coaching program or for sale by owners, AKA unrepresented owners, you know, probate, all the other 30 sources of free lead generation for listing, uh, you know, leads that we teach you how to do in premier coaching. That's what you should do. But first should be centers of influence and past clients, but please do not think centers of influence and past clients will ever give you consistent uh, deal flow because it will not. Question 22 or 23. 23. Are you actively working to improve your skills? Yes or no? And if you are a premier coaching member and I call any of the coaches and I ask them about you, would they say, yes, they're going to the premier coaching calls? Yes, they are actually implementing. I hear from them all the time. So are you actively working to improve your skills? The best way to know if you're looking to working to improve your skills, are you actually having Um, You know, the first questions Julie asked you with regards to the constant conversations with prospective Mm -hmm. buyers or sellers. That's how you improve your skills. No better role play partner than the for sale by owner, right? No no better role play owner than calling that lead back right away and using the script. That is going to be how you're going to learn. That's how you're going to be constantly improving your skills. Question 24. Can you identify where your next three to five transactions will come from? Buyers, listings, who are they and when is their next appointment with you? It's, it's two things, right? You might be identifying them. Would they identify themselves in the same way? Well, the test is when's your next appointment with them? Then number 25, and this is a mindset one I wanted to close today's podcast with. Do you actually believe that you will succeed in this business at a high level or are you just seeing how, it is, how it's going to go? Are you one foot in, one foot out, or are you fully committed and you actually believe that you are going to really kill it in this business. Do you believe that your uh, fate in this industry is tied to interest rates? You know, this is all part of question 25. Do you believe your fate in this industry is tied to the number of new listings in the MLS? Do you believe your fate in this industry always has to be beholden to the number of leads you guys can buy? Do you understand all this, the fallacies of the things we're hopefully uh, exposing all of you to? This is the simplest business that so many people love to make incredibly complicated. Very well put. That's and so true. It, it doesn't make sense, honestly. Real estate, selling real estate is perhaps the simplest business that can make you the most amount of money ever created by humans. Well, how did we open this podcast? With a story from one of our coaching members. And I have to point out, 
that that was his work over several days, okay? And when, it, when I have, uh, if you were an elite coaching member, and I think Coach Rochelle did this with him as well, one thing that's fun to do, if we look at his success by implementing much of what we talked about on today's podcast, he had that success, so what was that? That was about three buyer leads, two seller leads, three listings, and then the expired appointment. So that's uh, seven, at least seven transactions, basically averaging a potential deal a day. Okay, so let's just say he doesn't work 52 weeks of the year, he works 40 weeks of the year. So multiply, let's, let's say he, he overdid it this week and he only averages five new deals per week. I mean, that's millions of dollars of commission to him potentially maybe, you know, twice that, doing some very specific, very drilled down skills-based implementations following a reasonable level of discipline, a reasonable level of implementation, and being accountable to a coaching program where he can go and share his challenges and victories. That's the simple version of real estate. It's not complicated. And look, we do and are advocates of you know, branding, marketing, and all the rest of it. You just got to do it in the right order. We say this on every single podcast. And if you get into the business or if you're in this business and you're thinking you're going to brand your way to success, how's that working out for you, right? It doesn't. And if you, okay, Tim, what are you talking about? It is working for me. Really, go to your last 10 transactions and tell me where they came from. I will tell you where they came from. They probably came from referrals, not your branding campaign. They probably came from centers of influence and past clients. They came from two people you met at the gym. Do you notice the recurring theme? Your actual lead flow is not coming from the branding. It's coming from your actual doing real work of real estate. So get better at that to what Julie was originally saying. I think it was question four. Get great at what you're good at. And what you're not good at, maybe don't even worry about because there's enough things that you're good at that you can become great at. And, you know, there's only, only a handful of things you have to truly be great at in real estate if you want to essentially, you know, be king or queen of your real estate market. Number one is proactive lead generation. Number two is pre-qualifying. Number three is presenting. Number four is negotiating. Did I get that right? And number five, as Julie will make sure she reminds me, is furiously fast lead follow-up. But ideally, if you're doing the pre-qualifying when you did the proactive lead generation, there's not a lot of lead follow-up necessary because you will have set the appointment. You get really good at just those first three things. I'll even make it easier for you listeners. Mm -hmm. Proactive lead generation, pre-qualifying and presenting. Even if you're marginal at everything else, you're still going to do incredibly well in real estate. Notice what I did not say. Notice what is not on the list. Why are you deciding to make it so much more complicated? Because I went to this Facebook group because Bob the guru said I'm supposed to be working on my 14 stage CRM, blah, blah, blah. Really? Does it make sense? Really? I'm asking you a question. Logically, if you're wanting to, if you got into this business to help people make money or in some cases make money and help people, doesn't matter. The end result's going to be still the same. Are you doing, how's that working out in terms of the efforts that you're making? Are you discovering that people are trying to convince you that it's more complicated than it actually is? Why are you believing that? Why are you choosing to follow a path that has too many steps and too many threat vectors as far as too many places where, you know, hypothetically a CRM might not actually send the emails or your direct mail campaign turns out it went on, a, went out on a day where, it was a uh, same day over the holidays where all the local businesses were sending coupons or whatever. And so no one saw your direct mail piece. You guys get it? Why don't you realize that your natural propensity, and everybody does this, to make things more complicated than they have to be, is something that you can actually fix. So before you decide to do any activity in your business, ask yourself, how long is this particular activity going to take between my effort and the results that, I'm supposed to, that, I'm, that I want to get? Helping someone and making money. If it's more than 90 days, maybe 120 days, but really 90 days in this market, you probably shouldn't be doing it. And I know that's a big leap for some of you because you've invested so much time and unfortunately money, hoping and praying that some of these other passive things will eventually work. Branding campaigns. Yes, I'm talking to you. Well, maybe they will. Maybe they won't. Let's set aside the word maybe and let's get into action and actually do the things that you know for sure are going to generate money today. Isn't money today what you're truly after? I know it is. <laughs> I know it is Meanwhile, too. while you're waiting for all of that speculative stuff to work, pick up the phone, get face-to-face, -face, have actual real-world conversations. Well, look at Ryan. He's generating leads for free, making a, you know effort. He's going to consistently do that. That's going to become his lifestyle. He's going to start making consistent money. Do you think the branding gurus are going to be able to sell Ryan a branding campaign on how, hey, Brian, Ryan, if you just were to <laughs> mail and Facebook and digitally market to the people in your marketplace, when you went to the door and knocked on their door and they recognized 
you. Just think how much more advantage you'd have in them wanting to do business with you. You guys really believe that's true? No, you know what he'll say? I'm going to go door knock a few expireds and get a listing appointment by this afternoon. Exactly. And in his market, he's going to make, what, 30 or 40 grand. So guys, open your minds to the reality that this business, as I said, is this the best, I think it's truly the best small business that you can get into. Almost zero startup costs. You have uh, inventory that you don't have to pay for in the form of listings. And you make, in many cases, you can make tens of thousands of dollars per transaction. In almost all cases, you're going to make at least $10,000. That's a good business. Stop making it so complicated. In the meantime, guys, thank you for keeping this a number one listen to daily podcast for real estate professionals in at least the United States. Your homework from today's show is two parts. Number one, go back and answer all of those questions simply yes or no. The notes are in the show description. And when you're there, uh, homework assignment number two, make sure you join Premier Coaching if you've not yet done so already. We're told Premier Coaching is now the nation's number one selling coaching program. Doesn't surprise me. We've had thousands of people join, thousands of agents join in the last 12 months. And we love the opportunity to be of service to you guys as your real estate coaches. Have a fantastic day and we will talk with you on the show tomorrow. Hello, thank you for having watched this video. Please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's right, and don't forget to hit that like button, leave your comments and questions below, and we will get right back with you. Thank you for watching this video. Remember to watch the next one. You're gonna love that one.